The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Okay, so our last speaker is Ali Kazumai, yep. and he is a graduate student, so take it easy on him, from the University of Southern California. And he's going to be speaking about performance-based laboratory testing of cementitious materials for construction scale 3D printing. Thank you. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ali. I'm very glad that I have the opportunity to present my PhD work here. My PhD advisor is uh, Dr. Bero Koshnevis, and I'm going to talk about laboratory testing of uh, cementitious material for construction scale 3D printing. And I'm going to start with the general topic of automation. If you consider uh, major industries, you will see that almost any major industry has adopted automation in one way or another manufacturing, aerospace, military, or even you might have heard about these robotic warehouses of Amazon where small robots, you know, move uh, shelves of uh, products so that the ordering and delivery of uh, products is processed faster. But, uh, I mean, in our favorite industry construction, not much is actually happening in terms of automation. There have been uh, some earlier efforts in this field, mostly by Japanese engineers in 1980s and 1990s. One famous project is this big canopy system, which was basically an overhead delivery system, and they used it for several projects. But at the end, it couldn't you know, defeat the, the traditional construction systems, and the main reason, as Japanese themselves, they say, was the uh, large costs, costs for R&D, and also the fact that they could not reduce the uh, the labor force which was needed on the construction site. The newer or mo more recent uh, efforts toward automated construction, uh, some of them they are based on additive manufacturing techniques, layer by layer construction, which is the focus of my, my study and my talk, and also some other interesting uh, projects. Uh, for example, at ETH, Dr. Tim Wangler already expl explained about the ongoing projects like, like smart dynamic casting and mesh molds. I'm not going to repeat those again. Instead, I'm going to focus about additive manufacturing, a brief introduction of uh, this term, which is basically when you are dealing with a complex 3D geometry, we can easily break it down into simple 2D layers, as you can see here, and then build those 2D layers one by one at a time until we have the, the 3D geometry that we were looking for. Here also is a desktop 3D printer, which uses uh, thermoplastic in order to uh, build a hollow object on a built platform. And actually, if you think deeper about it, the idea of layer by layer construction is not new in, in construction. Bricklaying is a very good example, which has been proved working, you know, since uh, ancient time. And uh, actually, this uh, beautiful citadel in, in southern part of Iran was basically 3D printed about uh, 2,500 years ago using clay bricks on top of each other. Uh, so my point is that it's a very old idea. We are just using uh, modern tools in order to realize that old idea. And you hear different names of contracrafting, freeform construction, or additive construction for the same idea. Uh, this is a very interesting graph showing different projects over the last 20 years for 3D printing in architecture and uh, different materials which have been used. So you can see concrete is the most popular one, then clay, plastic, and etc. And also I'm very proud that I'm working with uh, someone who has started the whole field about 20 years ago at USC, Dr. Vero Koshnevis, uh, which mostly was, again, using concrete. So in terms of uh, having a reliable automated construction system. There are many advantages that were discussed today. 
the fact that we don't need the farm work anymore is very important. 35 to 60 percent of the cost of concrete construction is usually represented by the farm work. And also, there's no need for any two buildings to be the same anymore because it doesn't matter for the robot to have every building unique in terms of design. And the high construction speed, the design in uh, the freedom in architectural design, and of course, I mean, I mean, virtually we can have waste-free uh, construction. So the project which I'm working on is called, called again, Contour Crafting, used as a gantry system in order to deposit uh, thick layers of concrete with uh, smooth surfaces using some shovels. And uh, talking about my PhD work, I started with uh, finding the, the current knowledge gaps, no procedure or guideline was avail available for the concrete, which is going to be used in, in construction scale 3D printing, and also the performance requirements are not still clearly defined. And of course, we need a large number of uh, experimental, a large amount of experimental data in order to be able to define the acceptance criteria for fresh and hardened uh, concrete. Based on that, I uh, define the research ob objectives. As you can see here, the uh, performance requirements of only fresh printing concrete was the target of my study, and then uh, developing a framework for laboratory testing of uh, printing concrete. And uh, the ongoing part of my work, which is about the real-time quality monitoring of uh, cementitious material in a process like contour crafting. So for me, it didn't make any sense to use the big gantry machine every time to do a, an experiment for, for, for concrete. So instead, I decided uh, to develop a small concrete uh, printer. You, you, you can see the, the model here. Uh, this device is able to print layers up to 10 layers of 1.2 meter length and also I needed to develop an Android application so that the user would be able to control the machine using a tablet or a smartphone. And here are the hardware which I use. I use Arduino Mega as a microcontroller and then different drivers and motors of course in the system. And here is a short video of how the printer works and the connection using the app and then you can uh, adjust the speed, the linear speed of the printer and uh, the extrusion rate. And then of course you can adjust the height of the nozzle or move it to left or right. And some predefined commands in order to pin print one or several layers without stopping the device. And uh, when you are doing the printing using that small LCD on top, you can see the real uh, actually, the actual speed of the system to make sure, you know, it's not different than the setting. And for all my experiments, I use 6 centimeter per second for the linear speed of the extruder. These are the actual speed of the system, so it works as a closed loop system. In terms of uh, materials, I use type 2 Portland cement, and I used a uh, manufactured sand of maximum size of 2.3. And then uh, I use the PC-based super plasticizer. I use the viscosity modifying agent, polypropylene fibers of six millimeter length, and uh, silica film, of course, in order to improve the fresh properties and also uh, hardened properties of uh, concrete. And finally, I was curious to see the performance of this nano clay which few researchers had already used in self-compacting concrete, so I wanted to see the performance for concrete in 3D printing. And after doing a large number of experiments, I came up with these five, uh, four uh, mixtures that you see here. The total cementitious materials is uh, fixed at 600 kilograms per cubic meter, and uh, also the water cementitious ratio was uh, fixed at 0.43, so I, get, I could have some comparison between them. So the first one is the plain mixture, the second one 10% replacement of Portland cement by silica film, then fiber reinforced mixture, and finally the mixture with the nanoclay. Uh, I started with some conventional testing so other people could you know, compare the results with the, the, the results which, were, which I, wanted, I wanted to uh, generate in my study, and after that I considered three different aspects for workability of concrete in 3D printing print quality, shape stability, and printability time span, which I'm going to go through them one by one. 
So for conventional uh, testing, I use ASTM C 1437 in order to uh, measure the consistency of mixtures and then 7 and 28 day, day compressive strength as a fundamental and most basic uh, property of hardened concrete. Uh, these are the results. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. Just as we anticipated, we had almost 10% improvement in 7-day and 28-day uh, compressive strength of the mixture with silica fume. And uh, uh, more importantly is the print quality. So I defined, which is most, mostly about the properties, the visual properties of printed, printed layers. I defined uh, three criteria in order to uh, evaluate the, the print quality of each mixture. The first one was about the surface defects, those openings that you will see in concrete layers when the rheology, you know, is not uh, right. So a layer like this would definitely be rejected by the first criteria. Then uh, it was about the layer edges that had have to be visible and square, and then about dimension of printed layers. So uh, based on my design, I wanted to have layers of uh, 1.5 inch width, which is 38 millimeter. But you would see here for some mixtures, the number was much lo larger and far from the target width. So something like that, again, would be uh, rejected by the third criteria. And then I had another situation where in, in a single layer, I had large variations in a layer, which I call dimension consistency. After doing some experiment, I decided to choose 10% as the maximum acceptable variation in one uh, layer. And of course, I did this experiment several times, four times for each mixture, and then five measurements for each layer. And based on that, I could reject or, or accept one uh, concrete mixture. So the second aspect of workability was shape stability, the ability to resist deformations and as several layers are, on, are printed on top of each other. There are three sources of deformation in general, the weight of the layer itself. So if you even print one layer, there's a chance that uh, some deformations happen. And then you have the weight of the following layers where, which are printed on top of that. And then you have the pressure which is applied by the extrusion system on the, on the bottom layer. To measure shape and stability, I, I developed this experiment of layer settlement where we, have, we only have two layers of concrete printed on top of each other with a specific time gap, and then I had a camera placed in front of the layers and had a ruler as a scale right there. And using an image analysis software, ImageJ, I could measure the, the deformation in the, in the layers before, uh, by comparing the images before and after the second layer was printed. And I did five measurements for each layer, and for each mixture, I had three layers printed to have a fair judgment about, about mixtures. About the time gap between the layers, I didn't want to just pick a random number, so instead I considered a 110 square meter house, the house plan which was designed by an architect firm. Based on that, I calculated the nozzle traveling distance of 67 meters, and based on that, and considering the speed which I used for my experiments, I came up with the number 19 minutes for the time gap, so I used that number for my experiment, and also I wanted to have a worst case scenario when we don't have any time gap between the layers, so I used these two numbers for the experiments, and you can see the results in this table. The first one, the plane mixture, uh, I reported the result as, as being collapsed. And the reason you can see here, not only in the height, but also in the width of layer, I observed huge deformations. I tried to show the cross section right here to show the idea. But for the other uh, three mixtures, I could do the measurements. 1.8, 2.9, and 1.6 millimeter was the amount of deformation. So the lowest number was measured for nanoclay, the mixture with the nanoclay. And again, this is for zero time gap, so I didn't have any delay before I started printing the second layer. But when I had a time gap of 19 minutes, the more realistic scenario, fortunately, I, there wasn't any, any kind of deformation for the three, uh, three mixtures, which had some kind of uh, admixtures or supplementary cementitious material. But again, for the first one, I could measure 1.5 millimeter of deformation height. Uh, 
In order to see if I can scale up the results, I used the mixture with nanoclay, the last one, to print a sample with five layers. And you can see the result here. Using a time gap of 19 minutes again. And at this visually, you cannot detect any, any kind of deformation, which is good news at this step. The video is sped up two times, by the way. So uh, I also developed another quick experiment just for evaluation or comparison of different mixtures, cylinder stability tests. I designed and 3D printed these components that you see here, and the idea is the same as what were mentioned, what was mentioned before, that we apply a load to a, a concrete cylinder, and then you measure the deformation in the cylinder. So again, this is a very quick experiment, and also you don't need to print anything. So it could be used for comparison purposes, maybe. And uh, these are the results. The interesting thing was that the ranking of mixtures was very similar to the layer settlement test, which I consider to be more realistic. And again, the mixture with the nanoclay had the lowest deformation, while the mixture with the plain mixture had the largest deformation of 38 millimeter when I applied the load of 5.5 kilogram on top of this fresh concrete cylinder. So although it's very early and it's a lim limited data to have any kind of claim, but it seems that it could be a good, uh, a good experiment for just quickly comparing, the comparing different mixtures and deciding about the influence of different admixtures on shape and stability. And finally, the third as aspect of workability of uh, concrete, I call it printability time span, which is about the time during which the mixture could be used and extruded by the nozzle. It's very important in terms of uh, timing of material delivery to the nozzle and also operation of a big machine like Controcraft in Gantry. And I, def I described two limits, the printability limit, which is more about the quality of the layer. So the latest time, the longest period of time that you have until the quality of the concrete is affected uh, before being printed. And also the blocking limit, which is the latest time during which you, you can get rid of concrete inside the nozzle. So it's more about not damaging the extruder, which has happened to me a lot of times in the, in the lab, and it's not a good thing to happen, believe me. Uh, and I'm, gonna not, I'm not going to present the experimental results because of the limited time that I have, but you can find them in my papers. This is the essence of my work so far, a framework, which starts with some suggestions for the trial mixture and then print quality, shape of stability, and printability window, and of course when we are talking about the real construction projects, it's, it's very good if we can have a full-size experiment in a similar conditions uh, in lab. And currently I'm working on developing some real-time quality monitoring measures for this concrete 3D printing process, and also have some measures of estimation for the LEH uh, compressive strength of concrete, because we are talking about printing a whole building in one day, so that I think would be even more important. The early age compressive strength will be even more important than before. So we need to have accurate estimations. And of course, there are lots of op uh, open areas in this field which have to be addressed before these are used for, for construction projects. And I have several publications which I would be happy to provide anyone who is interested. And before I finish, for those of people who are interested in contract crafting, the good news is that uh, it is being commercialized now. The company has already been started for several months in El Segundo, California. And hopefully in 2018, you will hear very good news about uh, the application of contract crafting and the newer versions of contract crafting machine in the field. So with that, I want to thank you all and take any questions that you might have. Okay, just a quick question for your layers when you are printing. It seems like there is some kind of little bit mortar between two layers. Right. So what, 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 what is coming from where? This is this. I mean, we have to have some kind of gap between them, like two millimeter. I usually have gap between the nozzle and the old layer, and that will cause some concrete to spill over the next layer, which makes it ugly. I agree. But, I mean, one solution for that will have, you can have some of the, one of the travels to be a little bit longer to have an overlap with the older layer, right? So that could uh, cause, uh, solve this problem, I think. Okay, this could be also some 
like not water, it could be like grout. So let's send in this mix coming. Yeah. Let me first make yeah. sure that you are talking about the same. So, yeah, for example, in the video. So you're talking about that extra yeah. part between the two layers, right? Yeah, that's one, yeah. yeah, it's not, I mean, the grout just jumping out. It's because of, again, the distance which I have to have between the nozzle and the old layer that, you know, provides a, I mean, the material can escape from that, that little gap. And the solution for that, again, I think to have one of the travels a little bit longer, to have overlap with the old layer, and that, that could, I think, solve the problem, to have a more uniform surface. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no worries. You've got two related questions in terms of your, your passing, you're all doing the same direction. Have you considered going back and forth? And for your time to life, have you considered doing two houses next to each other so that you can continuous pass, essentially, doing two like, almost identical uh, structures in a, a large, large gantry format? Right. So about the direction, I mean, going back and forth, right, it's, posi it's totally possible, but just having another degree of freedom for the for the extruder so the extruder needs to rotate about the axis so that's totally possible on the gantry machine but not on this small printer and in terms of uh, having two buildings being printed yeah, it is totally possible by having several machines on the job site or having a huge gantry which can do the both but i think it's something about you know more future <laughs> Hey, uh, great presentation. So, is there a, in your test, is there a performance, uh, a performance barrier that you have to break to make this viable? And if so, how close are you to, to breaking that barrier? Uh, could you please repeat the question? I'm not sure yeah, if I... I guess what I'm really asking is like, is there a performance level this needs to, to pass in order for this to be largely viable? And how close are you to getting there? I mean... These early experiments, they show that it's, it's totally possible. It's just a matter of uh, being improved. And the, the major challenge would be, you know, having this type of performance on the construction side, because that's the ultimate goal of uh, doing all these things on the construction side. I think that's not in near future. That's, that's something still a lot of work has to be done on it until it's possible. Thank you very Thank much. You.